Yeah, so that's done. So we, we've been looking at chapter three, right? Um, financial stewardship. And uh, in chapter three, we looked at um, the, uh, we looked at God's guarantee. Like, what is it? How can we know that God guarantees to prosper his people? Right? That is what we looked at uh, uh, last class. And we, and we, um, and, and we looked at how the nature of God itself, the inherent quality, um, the inherent value or characteristic of God itself is to bless, right? is to prosper his people. Um, so that is, we looked at several scriptures, we looked at Genesis and uh, how God in creation blessed creation, right? blesses creation saying, you know, uh, he, he spoke his word of blessing and say, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth. And he blessed, he released his word of blessing. Right? Uh, and then we looked at the book of James where you see that, uh, that every good gift, every perfect gift comes from him and in whom there is no shadow of, or variation or uh, heart of changing. Right. So we saw that in Psalm 84 verse 11 also. We, we looked at all these scriptures which talk about the character of God, which talks about the the, the, the inherent um, nature of God to bless. Okay, so we can be sure that yes, God is a God who blesses, and we see scriptures like uh, you know some uh, it says no good thing will He withhold from those who walk righteously. He's not the one who's holding back. You know sometimes we hesitate to receive because of maybe wrong ideas about God, maybe um, maybe our lack of faith even, sometimes maybe we hesitate or we say, okay, um, because of the poor understanding we have about ourselves and you say, okay, maybe, you know, we're beating ourselves up out because of some poor, uh, because of our, you know, uh, the, our history with God or, you know, the ways we have let him down and we're beating ourselves up and saying, I don't deserve this, right? And, uh, and, uh, uh, sometimes it's a lack of faith, you know, we're not going to him with a big measure, big enough measure, right? So, um, but the nature of God revealed in scripture shows us that he's a God who blesses and we can be sure that he's a God and there's no partiality with him. He's an impartial God. So what he'll do for one, he'll do for the other as well, right? So we looked at that and then we looked at the general promises of God. We looked at uh, the logos and the rhema and we see that, yes, God can speak specifically, the Holy Spirit can, um, you know, highlight uh, and give a specific instruction and specific strategy and say, okay, you do this and I want you to do this. I want you to invest in this. I want you to, you know, do this and, uh, you know, and, and so that blessings flows into our life. So God is well able to do that. But also the general promises of God, which means you know, general scripture, logos, when we look at logos itself, there are enough and more scriptures testifying to the fact that God is a God who blesses. God is a God who, who wants to prosper his people. So so the thing is, oh, uh, where did we miss all this? You know, how did we miss all this? Maybe we attributed blessing. When we look at the word blessing, you know, sometimes we attribute that to, uh, we spiritualize that. And we say, okay, maybe it is, you know, the blessing of knowing him, the blessing of salvation, the blessing of revelation, the blessing of having received spiritual as well. There is truth to it. You know, that, that, is, that is definitely a big part of God blessing us. You know, the fact that our eyes are open to see him, to know him, to hear him. Right, uh, salvation itself, uh, amazing, the biggest blessing of all, right? As new creations with born again spirit, with the spirit of God indwelling us, what more can you ask for, right? It's a big, big, amazing, immense blessing. But blessing also, we need to know that it carries with it a blessing in all realms, like relationally, materially, financially, emotionally, everything. It's it, that's the realm. So, if we look at only one realm, then we could come to the wrong understanding. That uh, yeah, I mean, these, all these verses can be looked at through that lens. Right? We are looking at it through that lens and saying, oh, okay, it's a, it's a green-colored lens, and then I, I see a thing green. And right? why? 
it's it, it actually it's it's some other shade but you know i'm looking at it green because you know i have green colored lens in the glasses that i'm wearing right so it is possible why you know we we do that uh, sometimes we you know we come to that understanding of how did we miss all these scriptures it is possible that we've done that right so um yeah so the next thing that we're going to see uh, you know how how can we be sure that god guarantees to bless his people the next thing that we see is the the very blessings that he spoke over abraham okay the god blesses abraham and uh, he speaks uh, his blessing over abraham uh, and we see that in several uh, verses in genesis right we we look at so let's look at a few of these verses and now okay god blessed abraham now how does it apply to me right in that sense uh, why should it apply to me okay, we see that also we see that connection also as new Ste- new testament believers what has happened on the cross that god removed a curse that we might receive the blessing and specifically it talks about the blessings of abraham right so we lo- let's look at uh, some of these uh, scriptures let me just share the screen and um, for the- those of us who want to follow the notes you can do that here okay so yeah it's a blessing of abraham okay let's uh, let's just let's look at genesis 12 genesis 12 and verses 1 to 3 we see god you know bringing in that whole a redemptive plan bringing in that whole um uh, you know in in that um, uh, talking about blessing okay so it says here um, genesis 12 verses 1 to 3 um the lord said to uh, had said to abram abram uh, get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that i will show you i will make you a great nation i will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing i will bless those who bless you and i will curse him who curses you in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed okay so the blessings of abraham what does he say he says uh, you know you will be blessed i'm going to bless you and you will be a blessing and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed okay um so that is something that uh, he says if we turn to the next chapter chapter 13 and verse 2 we see some of the possessions that he carried now abraham was blessed knowing god abraham was blessed walking with god right? and it applies to uh, him uh, some of the victories that he had the the fact that he was a friend of god um, that the and relationally um, you know the kind of uh, things that he had and and we see materially uh, 13 and verse 2 says abram was very rich in livestock in silver and in gold okay so and uh, and it it mentions there very specifically you know there's a reason that's mentioned there that uh, you know god blessed and it comes from him and there's nothing to be afraid of nothing to be embarrassed about and nothing to shun these things you know if you want to you know receive the blessing and if you want to use it in the right way god ordained way we saw that you know uh, prosperity is uh, divinely enabled success increase growth by divinely empowered means and methods right so we see that for, and for divinely appointed purposes so when we look at it that way if god is ensuring that these things come through so you know so we are a conduit we are an instrument we are a vessel to receive and to pour out so um so it says that he was very rich in livestock in silver and in gold which was basically saying his net worth was was good right okay then we look at uh, one more scripture and then we'll go to galatians 3 so we look at uh, genesis 24 and um, verse 1 okay 24 verse 1 um Now Abraham was old well advanced in age and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things so it's scripture records for us who was the source who was the source right who was the source of blessing how did Abraham come into being all this it was the Lord 
says Abraham was old, well advanced in age, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. So in all things. Now look at that phrase, all things. Right? In all things he was blessed. So when we expand the scope of all things, so we know that it was not it was not narrow to certain areas, it was in all things. So the Lord had blessed. He was the source of all blessing. He was a source of all blessing. And Abraham was blessed in all things. And this is towards the end of his life, right? Uh, well advanced in age and so on. So uh, if we go down to verse um, 34 and uh, you know 35, this is the testimony of uh, his servant. Right? He goes in search of uh, a bride for um, Isaac and so uh, for, for, for Abraham's son Isaac. So this is the testimony of him. He, he, now this is the observation of the servant. So he says, um, uh, verse 34, I am Abraham's servant. The Lord has blessed my master greatly and he has become great and he has given him flocks and herds silver and gold, male and female servants and camels and donkeys. Now that is, you know, his observation. And he says, okay, there are servants even, you know, he's adding, okay, um, is there are servants and there are, you know, there are donkeys and there's, means there's flocks and herds and gold and silver. And, and <clears throat> we can attribute that. He's attributing that to uh, God being the source of those blessings, right? So we we see that. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we now, um, you know, there are other scriptures also you can you can look at. Now we go to Galatians three, Galatians three, and um, verse thirteen and fourteen, verses thirteen and fourteen. Um, I'm sure we've read this. Um, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. Verse 14, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Okay, That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Well, Galatians 3, 13 and 14. First of all, it says we have been redeemed. We have been taken out of the, the negativity of the law or uh, the curse of the law. <clears throat> the bad things that are supposed to happen to us because we have not kept the law. right? The, the, the doors that have opened because we have not kept the law. All the negative things, uh, all the things that take away from us, not add to us, but take away from us. All those things, we have been redeemed. Right? We have been redeemed from that. We've been bought out of that. We've been taken out of that, the curse of the law. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles, might come upon us, not just the Jews, but everyone else, in Christ Jesus. So I have received Christ, and this is God's plan, that the blessing of Abraham will come upon me as a, as a person who is in Christ. And uh, it says that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So he's talking primarily about salvation. He's talking primarily about um, receiving uh, the gift of the Holy Spirit through faith. And we and we know that because, you know, uh, Paul is uh, addressing that in Galatians. You know, he's talking about making the difference between law and making the difference between how one receives by faith. And uh, so he's talking to the Galatians who are going back to the law was talking about you know these gen these it was a gentile church and they were talking about they had received entertained some teachers who were you know wanted them to be circumcised wanted to go back to the law so we know that he's talking about uh, redemption he's talking about the blessing of righteousness that abraham received but it also talks about you know the aspect of the realm of blessing that that uh, abraham received from God. Right? Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. So that, that was something that he received from God and uh, everything else that he received was from God. He was a source of the blessing. And it says here that we've been redeemed from the curse 
that the blessing of Abraham might come upon us. Okay, so this is another guarantee that we can be sure that hey, it is God's will for me. It is God's will that I be blessed. It is God's will that I be uh, you know, prosperous. Uh, I have success. I have increase and I have growth. Okay, so uh, it is God's will, right? Um, okay, then we look at the new covenant of blessing. Okay, now we know uh, you, you have studied about biblical covenants and, you know, uh, so I, I'm not going into the details of this, but the fact is that God made a covenant uh, with Abraham and several other covenants with um, in the Old Testament. We studied that and the covenant came with the blessing, right? This promise that God was making all of him available for the people in the covenant, uh, was was a reality, people of the covenant, that he was making all of himself available. And with him came the blessing of the covenant. Right? And uh, it involved, uh, apart from the blessing of knowing him, it involved certain other things as well. It involves all other realms, emotional, material, it involved that. right? So in the covenant that God made, uh, we see these blessings of those in the covenant. Now we know that in redemption, the cross speaks of a better covenant. Right? The, the cross declares a better covenant, you know, better than all those other covenants. And uh, we see that um, we see that in uh, probably we should look at Hebrews eight and verse six, and also Second Corinthians three. So Hebrews eight and verse six talks about how he has obtained more excellent ministry in as much as he is also mediator of a better covenant which was established on better promises. So it's talking about Christ. It's talking about him being the high priest and um, how he has obtained a more excellent ministry. is a mediator of a better covenant. Okay. So simply for us to understand that we are people of a better covenant and as part of as being people of a better covenant um, whose mediator was Christ there are promises that come with the covenant which belong to us right and it's better than the than the old one it's better than the previous one okay so that is something that we see if you look at second Corinthians 3 second uh, Corinthians 3 and verses 6 to 11 again, you know, the reiteration that it is a better covenant, that it is a better ministry, uh, that is a better life in the spirit, right? Second Corinthians chapter three and verse six. Um, uh, let me just quickly read that. Who has also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. For but if the ministry of death written and engraved on stones was glorious so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the face of Moses because of the glory of his countenance, which glory was passing away, how will the ministry of the spirit not be more glorious? For if the ministry of condemnation had glory, the ministry of righteousness exceeds much more in glory. For even what was made glorious had no glory in this respect because of the glory that excels. For if what is passing away was glorious, what remains is much more glorious. So for us to simply know that we are part people of a covenant, we are part of this covenant, and as part of this covenant, we there come these covenant promises and covenant blessings, and these are better than the previous covenants right these are these are better than the previous covenants so the uh, if you look at the old testament you know especially if you look at um, uh, deuteronomy 28 right deuteronomy 20 I, I, you may it may have gone through you know deuteronomy 28 verses 1 to 14 talk about the blessings of one who keeps the law the blessings of following the law um, 1 to 14 is uh, is is very good to read through right uh, but 14 onwards or 15 onwards, it's a scary part. Right? It talks about the curse and um, 
yeah let's uh, let's just go there deuteronomy 28 1 to 14 right uh, so it's actually the uh, blessing of obedient obeying obeying god um, 1 to 14 it talks about uh, you know it talks about the material things it talks about food it uh, talks about you know storehouses and uh, it talks about relational things you know this is how the uh, and, and favor and so on this is how the people of the earth will see you and um, and uh, uh, you know that you are called by the name of god they shall be afraid of you and um it talks about um, the fruit of your body you know meaning your uh, you know offspring your children and and so on you know you 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 maybe you can take time to go through it right uh, verses 1 to 14 um and then it talks about the curses it talks about the curses of disobedience right so verses 1 to 14 the blessing it's in the old dispensation and uh, and here we see in second corinthians 3 that hey we have this better covenant Right, we have something that is even more glorious, even more glorious, and He has made us sufficient, uh, sufficient as ministers of the new covenant. Right, so we see again that um, this is God's heart, and this is something that He has established in the old and the new. So we see that that as a guarantee, that as um, uh, something that reveals that. It is God's heart. It is God's will to prosper His people, okay? Because of the covenant, right? And if you, one thing to do is um, when we look at verse, uh, sorry, uh, Deuteronomy twenty-eight verses one to fourteen, can we can thank God? We can thank God and say, God, I thank you that um, this is a blessing. This portion is mine. You know, this is mine. I thank you for it. I I receive it, God. You know, I receive it. You know. And, and to look at it as something that's in the Old Testament, something that's in the Old Dispensation, and God wants something far better for us in the New Dispensation, right? to, to receive it and say, oh, God, I thank you, to receive it by faith, to be open to it, right? Uh, to be open to it and say, Lord, um, yeah, I'm, I'm open to this. You know, this is the blessing that you want to bring about, um, and it's a, it's a blessing of obeying you, God, and I, and I receive it, right? And the, and the beautiful thing is that he has, he has actually redeemed us from the curse of disobeying, right? So every curse that you see on the disobedience, I mean, it's, um, it's, it's very scary, right? It about, it's about financial, uh, you know, um, bankruptcy. It's about, uh, yeah, it's about disease and, and, and so many things happening there. Um, well, it's good to go through that and say, I've been redeemed from it. And Galatians 3, I stand on Galatians 3 and verse 14 and, and 3 and verses 13 and 14 and 15. And, you know, I stand redeemed. I stand redeemed. It is, uh, you know, it's something that I've been taken out of. Therefore, uh, I am redeemed from all this. So uh, this is something that we can do as well, saying, God, I thank you, God, that it shall not come upon me because I'm redeemed, right? So it's a good, good exercise, good thing. To, so these actually show us that it is God's heart, right? It is God's nature. It's God's guarantee to bring in his divinely uh, enabled success and growth and increase into the life of his people. Um, so that is something for us to grasp. That is something for us to, you know, not just understand and uh, and and just talk about it, but also to receive and live. Right? To receive and live. Um, maybe sometimes we are we are scared, saying, "Okay, oh, what will the others say?" Right? Sometimes that's the thing. You know, I remember, um, you know, this was in school a long time back. Uh, so. I we used to you know we we had we had a car and uh, we used to get dropped me and my brother um, in in school uh, we there was one person to help us uh, you know driving so so he would drop us in school so the thing is I remember uh, at one point I noticed that most of my schoolmates most most of my classmates would come either by 
by bus, which is a public transport, or they were st you know staying close by, so they would come by bicycle or they would walk to school. Okay, but the thing is, I was feeling embarrassed uh, coming in a car, getting down in a car. Right, uh, for some reason, I just felt that uh, either I just wanted to be one of them. And I was too young to really process that, but I just felt embarrassed getting out of a car because I. One thing is maybe it was different from you know uh, not too many people were coming by car, and I was coming by car and getting down. Maybe it felt different, or uh, I don't know what it was. But looking back, I feel that maybe it was also you know I didn't want to show, or uh, you know I felt uncomfortable showing that. Oh, you know I was. Uh, maybe I had this. Uh, I was. Uh, I had this transport, which was not available to many. Whatever you know, at that stage in life, I felt uh, I felt uncomfortable. Now, uh, looking back, you know, maybe we we could have the same kind of mindset. You know, this uncomfortable feeling about wealth, this uncomfortable feeling about success and increase, and it could be because you know maybe others around are in a in a. <clears throat> we're, we're on the same, you know, same level, and we don't want to look different, or we don't want people to, I don't know, say what they have to say because you know we are having this, you know, enjoying this material benefits, whatever it could be. Um, but it's possible that we might have that kind of a mindset. Not all. I had, I had to, you know, work my way out of that. Um, maybe, you know. We might feel that way, but I just wanted to say that you know this is not God's way of looking at us, right? Um, God's way of looking at us is that here's my servant, and I take pleasure, I take delight, and I think <clears throat> all of us, as uh, you know, as some of us as parents, we would understand that you know when we have your own child, I know Nikki is there, John, you know you have your own son or daughter, and um, you want the best. Of course, you want them to life learn life lessons, and you want them to you know that know about hard work and the value of hard work and everything. And <clears throat> you want you want them to know that. <clears throat> Excuse me, but you want to provide the very best. You want to provide the best opportunity. You want to provide the best uh, thing possible within whatever you can. <clears throat> and you're not, you know, you you would rather go without it something without something so that you can provide and uh, you know i understood that as a father right? the day i became a father and i saw my ch child saw my daughter held my daughter i realized that hey, i would do anything i would do anything in order for her to be provided for her to be given the best opportunities for her to become a success in life right? so how much more our heavenly father Yes, there are like lessons to be learned. Yes, there is character to be formed, but uh, but God's desire is this. God's perspective is this. Okay, so there could be many things that might hinder us from receiving. There could be many things that might stop us, block us from even having the same perspective as God. But but that's the thing that we need to work on. You know, like we said last class, that's the thing we need to renew our mind to. And this is one of the biggest, uh, biggest things that areas that we can renew our minds to, you know, when it comes to wealth, because um, the enemy wants to steal, the enemy wants to kill, the enemy wants to destroy, um, and God wants to, you know, bring life and life in its abundance. He has come as a good shepherd to bring life and life in its abundance, and we can do so much more. And uh, when when we when we look at finances, when we look at money as a, as a tool. As something that God puts in our hands, and uh, when we hold on to it lightly, right, and and not be opposed to it flowing through us, it, you know, if we want to, if we want to flow through us, we need to receive, right. Um, so so that's something that that's an area for us to work on. Okay, um, any questions or any any of your your thoughts or your experiences? I think we can we can talk about it. You know, I shared about mine. So, uh, anything that uh, you might want to share, you're welcome to share. Um,
you are not much into sharing <laughs> okay okay so let's let's move on then you know uh, but if you have if you do have any questions um, anything to clarify anything to contribute you know you're welcome to do that um even during the course of uh, you know what you're going to spend discussing next okay so let's look at um, you know uh, like we said you know what are the some some things that could block okay let's look at some hindrances now we we'll, we looked at god's perspective we looked at what the scripture talks about that we looked at you know god's intentions his desires his wish for us as people in christ so we we looked at all that so there's nothing that is you know no good thing with he withhold from those who walk righteously so there's nothing holding god back right so if that is so then why is it that a lot of people you know are you know living the kind of life far below uh, what god wants right why is it that so we look at some of the hindrances okay what are some things that are blocking what are some things that are that are really being being um, a, a a boundary a blockage um, for for this right? if it is not god's you know if it's not nothing to do with god if it's not something that is on his side then there has to be a problem on the other side right so what are some hindrances let's look at that right uh, let me share the screen again um right okay so the first thing uh, what we see is that uh, what you see in scripture is wrong motivation okay wrong motivation now god is a giver god is the one who blesses god is the one who's generous but if there is wrong motivation from our side then that becomes a hindrance to receive from god okay so we are looking at hindrances for prosperity okay hindrances for god given prosperity right divine prosperity now there could be hindrances now what are these the first thing is wrong motivation in a sense the motivation of my heart why i want what i want okay the why behind the what that's the motivation now okay let's look at james chapter 4 verses 2 and 3 you lust and do not have you murder and covet and cannot obtain you fight in war yet you do not have because you do not ask okay so that's verse 2 you're lusting you do not have you covet you murder you're not able to obtain you fight you strive you do something but you do not have because you do not you do not ask which means that is a principle that god wants us to ask and receive so that our joy might be full so he wants us to ask and receive okay then verse 3 you ask okay i'm doing something that god wants me to do and i do not receive you ask and do not receive because you ask a miss that you may spend it on your pleasures okay so there is uh, there is selfishness um we know that god is not against spending it on ourselves so which means that this is this is going going beyond that which means that this is all about i want it for me for myself right i want it for i'm i'm selfish about this i'm not going to let it go i'm going to have a tight grip on this and my heart is still not not set free from greed my heart is still not set free from covetousness because you see you know that's what it is it's all about lusting and coveting and and fighting and striving to get something right so that is still there and then i ask with all this this motivation for you know fighting and coveting and lusting which is just, and i'm asking you know with all that still there probably and i do not have because i'm asking a miss right and uh, and verse 1 actually says you know where do wars and fights come from do not come from your desires for pleasure that war in your members so, so it's something fleshly the motivation itself is fleshly it is it is that i might spend it on uh, you know on on my own 
pleasures, right? Now, I also want to, you know, so that we, we have the right perspective, we have the balance, you know, uh, just want us to look at 1 Timothy 6 again and verse 17, right? 1 Timothy 6 and verse 17, the last part of this, our last part of uh, verse 17 says, um, not to trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God. This is living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy. Who gives us richly all things to enjoy. Okay, so God is not against us enjoying the riches that he puts into our hands. Okay, he's definitely not against that. So we see this right? he's, because he's a God who takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. He's the one who blesses. He's the one who blessed Abraham. And he wasn't angry that Abraham had gold and silver and livestock and all that. It was, it was God who blessed. He was the source. So God is not ours. You know, what did he do with the flock? Probably he traded, probably he used it, you know, for his lunch and dinner and whatnot. Uh, you know, he maybe you know, out of the skin he clothed and he was able to keep himself warm. You know, all that, you know. So God is not uh, against that, enjoying the riches that he puts into our lives. He's not against that. So here, there's a, there's a big difference because the heart is covetous. The heart is lusting. And it is asking for more and more because uh, it is asking and it's not receiving. The person is not receiving because they're asking a miss, wrong motivation. Okay. Uh, Luke chapter 12, 16 and 21, the Lord Jesus, he gives the parable of the rich man. And uh, uh, it says the ground of the rich man yielded plentiful. And rich man was thinking, you know, let's look at what was going on in his, in his mind. Right? What shall I do? Since I do not have, you know, I since I have no room to store my crops. So he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build greater. And there I will store all my crops and my goods. Now, there's nothing wrong. You know, this is a growth mindset, right? Uh, if, if you're going to run a business without this mindset, then, you know, you can't really, you know, you, you need to have a goal. You need to have a goal of increasing. Uh, this is a growth mindset. So this is good. You know, I have no room to store my crops, a legitimate need. You know, I, I have no room to store it, so let me build. But look at verse 19. And I will say to my soul, soul, you have many goods laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. So we have something, you know, some we have an understanding there. Okay, this is the mindset of the person. He's saying, okay, you know, you you relax now, you don't have to worry. And, the, and God says, fool this night, your soul will be required of you. Then where, then whose will those things be which you have provided? So is he who lays up treasures, treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. So in this equation of, you know, building bigger, better uh, bonds for storage of the increase, there is no God in this equation. It's I, me, myself, and I'm going to retire, relax, you know, retire early, see the world. There's no, there's no God involved in that. Right? So, he, so the Lord is saying, you know, who lays up treasures for himself and does not, and is not rich towards God. Okay. So there's no God in this picture. So, so it's talking about that. It's, so it's nothing wrong in storing, I mean, tearing down the smaller ones and digging up, you know, and, and building up bigger ones so that, you know, to take care of that, you know, that's good stewardship, right? To take care of the, those grains and, and to make sure that it doesn't get spoiled. And that's good. That's good job. That's good work. But the thing is when God is not in the picture and when it's about myself, then there is a problem. So, that is again a wrong motivation. So one is not, when is when there is a wrong motivation, then there is, that becomes a hindrance. And that becomes a hindrance because with wrong motivation, when you put, you know, this kind of blessings in a person's hands, then that person is well capable of destroying oneself. You know, so the blessing that comes from God, he's the source. 
but God cares too much about us in order to destroy ourselves, in order for us to destroy ourselves. So he loves us. He cares deeply about us. He doesn't want us to be destroyed because of these things. He's interested in something deeper. And when that alignment is made, when that check is made, when that, you know, that correction is made, he's able to entrust even more to go through our hands so that we can be a blessing, right? So when that correction is made, when we involve God in the picture, when we say, okay, God, you know, all that I have is yours, God. You know, everything has come from you. All that I have is yours. Now, let's do this, God. You tell me. Right? I know you're not against me enjoying my life. I know that you're not against any of this. So you show me, you teach me. Uh, I want to move in your plans and purposes now. Now God is, you know, God is, uh, now that's, you know, the right motivation, right? So uh, the wrong motivation can be a hindrance. The second thing is a wrong method, right? Well, the motivation is what, okay, I, I want to please God. I want to, you know, uh, I want to, do, you know, do his purposes. I want to, I want to be a blessing. Uh, but it can be a wrong method where, um, you know, even Psalm 23 talks about how God leads us in paths of righteousness because he is the righteous one. He is the whole one. Okay. Psalm 5 and verse 4, for you are not a God who takes pleasure in wickedness, nor shall evil dwell with you. Go down to verse 12. For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous with favor. You will surround him as with a shield. So it talks about righteousness. It talks about God who does not delight in wickedness and, and evil does not dwell with him. So he's a righteous one. You know, just like we saw the nature of God uh, being one to bless, being one to you know, uh, ge be generous, um, to bring in blessing in a person's life. We see the nature of God is righteousness. He's holy, infinitely holy, righteous. Um, and, uh, and such a God, when we indulge in methods that are unrighteousness, uh, that are unrighteous, right? Methods that are unrighteous, use uh, methods that are unholy, tainted with wickedness, tainted with the flesh and things like that. So God cannot bless that. God cannot use that in our lives. Maybe it, it'll just run for a while and then, you know, but it's it's not really blessing anyone, right? It's not being a blessing to us. So it becomes a hindrance then, really. Um, so the wrong method, right? and I think uh, a classic example would be, you know, let's say um, the... Robin Hood, okay, we all know the story. Robin Hood, would, he wanted to actually um, help the poor, right? but he wanted to rob from the rich in order to help the poor. Right? His intention was very, I think it was good. He wanted to help the poor. Now, how do I do it? I'm going to rob the rich. Right? Employ a method that was, that was not really right in order to make sure or in order to give the riches to the poor, to those who didn't have need. So, you know, just a simple an analogy to see that, uh, to show us that we could be using wrong methods. Our intentions could be pure, sincere, but then for whatever reason, we use a unrighteous method, a method that is not right. So like we saw earlier, the, the end just not does not justify the means. Right, the means talks about the method. The means, when we say means, we're talking about the the, the things that we do in order to re reach that end. Okay, so the end does not justify. Okay, this is the end that I want to do. That I want to reach. This is the goal that I want to reach. But I need to be careful about the means. What is the method that I'm using in order to reach that goal? Because the end does not justify. Right. If success is an end that does not justify that I can do whatever I want or whatever method I choose to reach success to, or to reach, you know, my financial goals or to reach increase. Right. So the end does not justify the means. So we see here that the methods we use are important in God's eyes because he's a righteous one. He leads us in righteousness. Okay. 
Okay, two more, I think a few more are there. Uh, so we'll, we'll look at that in the next class. Um, uh, but I really, you know, want to encourage us to um, let this change us, let this transform our thinking. You know, that is the, I think that's the main thing about this, this course, that's the main thing about these sessions, that we would, you know, the truth of this, we would let it change the, the way we look at wealth, the way we look at God, we will let it transform us. And it will be, um, you know, a very liberating thing because truth liberates us to live fully, to live freely for the purposes of God, right? Okay, so thank you. God bless. Uh, we'll keep, catch up again next week. Bye-bye. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, see you, Isaac. Bye-bye. Thank you.